CataractCoach.com. A shallow anterior chamber with some iris prolapse. Ooh, it's going to be a tough case. Plus, we're going to perform some MIGS procedures here to help with the pressure control. Now, this has happened to all of us as surgeons. You see a patient like this, and the patient has a reasonably small pupil there. You put in some anesthetic, maybe some phenylephrine, epinephrine, you get a little bit more dilation. That looks pretty reasonable. Now, most advanced surgeons will say, in a case like this, you really don't need iris hooks or a pupil ring. You can actually just do your case here. So let's see what's going to happen. Now, put in some viscoelastic inside the eye. A little bit of viscoelastic on the cornea. Let's get that rexus done. Now, remember, it's a smaller pupil, so probably a four millimeter pupil. You may want to make that rexus a little bit larger than the pupil. There we go. Clearly, the mark of an advanced surgeon to be able to make a rexus underneath the iris. Now, let's keep watching here. We sped this video up a little bit. It's three times normal speed, so we are moving quickly here. And let's see a little bit of a hydro dissection. Here's where I like to get the nucleus kind of prolapsed out of the bag, although that's totally optional. If you get the nucleus kind of partially prolapsed up, you can have the nucleus hold the pupil open for you and keep the iris away. So now going in, Faco probe. And let's see the technique. You're probably going to be a chopper in the bag. Cleaning up the anterior cortical material. Okay, here comes the chopper. And buzzing in. And let's see. Yep, vertical chop. Nicely spread. And let's see, rotating it. And another vertical chop. Drowning there with a little bit of BSS. Got to get that BSS off the uh, surface of the eye. Probably an elderly patient with a little bit of deep set eyes. Now look at the iris already prolapsing through the para. Isn't that interesting? You already have some iris prolapse through that paracentesis. So now going in here with a, looks like a hook instrument, right with an iris push pull, and getting those pieces of the nucleus up. As you bring those up, I love, I like it. That's the idea. You've already chopped it. Now you're going to use this second instrument, this iris push pull, to kind of push the iris out of the way and give yourself some visualization. It's a good second instrument to have because now as you already did the piece here, you can lift the iris out of the way if you need to. So pieces are coming out pretty nicely here. Again, we've spread the video up to 3x normal speed so we can get through this 19-minute uh, case pretty efficiently. And as these pieces come out, that looks pretty good. And now we're going to have to do some cortex removal after that. But ooh, this is a little bit of a tough case here. Okay. Now, look where the iris was prolapsing at the para. It's become a little bit of an iridotomy there. And this is a little bit tough because the patient's got these blue eyes. This is a very light-colored iris. So a little more viscoelastic going inside the eye. Bimanual eye approach can help. And so now getting oh, good exposure here. Get all that lens material out. A little epinuclear shell, perhaps more cortex. And then you really need to lift up the iris to check after you get the lens in the bag. Make sure the eye wall is totally in the capsule bag behind the rexus. Also to make sure that there's no retained lens material in the capsule bag at the lens equator. Now look at that little bit of an iris defect. This has happened to all of us. I assure you. Iris trauma happens. It's unusual, but it can happen to even to experienced surgeons because patients have different anatomy, bad protoplasm. Tissue response is not identical for everyone. So here comes the viscoelastic to fill up the capsular bag and give you a little bit of viscomedrisis. Yep, there we go. Put a little bit of a viscoelastic barrier there near the paracentesis. Let's get the eye on the bag. Obviously, going to be in a monofocal lens for any glaucoma patients. Probably your best option for most glaucoma patients. So we'll get that in the capsular bag and then dial that into position. And again, here's where I like to have a good check. Lift up the iris all around. Now, should you do anything with the iris uh, uh, defect that you have there? Could you put a suture now? You could put a suture now. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think you can leave it be. It's obviously a functional peripheral iridotomy. And you can see if the patient's bothered post-op, then you can certainly go back and put a simple 10 proline suture to close that up. Now, let me tell you about retinaround.com. As we're switching over for the gonia view, that's our sister channel. It's so much great material. If you're a cataract surgeon, a glaucoma surgeon, I promise you're going to learn so much. We all got to know something about the retina, right? And we have nice, very basic videos there, too. I promise you will love it. You owe yourself to check it out. Now, here we go. The eye pushed uh, away from you, so patient's head, head tilted away from you. The microscope tilted towards you. This is the viscoelastic going on top of the cornea. There's your gonio, so we can get a good view of the angle here. Let's see the procedure we're going to do. Probably... I'm guessing here, maybe we can do some sort of mix procedure. Let's see what we're going to do. Now you're going to put it a, an implant in here. You're going to do a goniotomy, trabeculotomy. Let's see what we're going to do. Okay, looks like we're going to do it. Going to end with the trabecular meshwork here. Maybe, yep. Trabeculotomy, goniotomy. Let's see, get that thing advanced. Going one direction. Going the other. Trabeculoplasty, perhaps, with some viscoelastic. All right, nope, there we go. Opening up that uh, zip all around. That looks good. And now let's get the eye back to primary, tilt the patient's head back. Let's get the microscope back to normal position. And now we've got to evacuate out the viscoelastic, to call this a day. So you leave a comment below. What would you do? Would you put a suture in right now? You're already there. You put one simple suture to close that iris defect. Or would you say, no, at this point, let's not worry about it. 
So again, I'm inclined to do a stepwise approach and say, listen, no big deal. Let's just wait and see. And then you can see this patient has such delicate iris tissue here, such a la absence of pigment that even if the other paracentesis says, look, there's a little bit of translumination defect as well. So again, I would just at this point, let's just call it a day, come out of the eye here. If you need to, put a suture in, seal up these incisions. Ah, there's the check, just to make sure everything looks okay. All right, reasonable. Here's the check on the other side. I'm just making sure it looks like the lens in the bag. Probably not looking out to the equator as much, but just to make sure things look good. I like it, good idea. Let's close this up. I'd probably be inclined to put a suture in just because of, just because I'm a cautious person. But sealing up those incisions, actually your main incision sealing up pretty nicely. Don't have to do much there. And let's take a look here at the very end. Pressure's gonna have good pressure control. Obviously, just doing the counter surgery alone is gonna decrease the intraocular pressure by a substantial degree. I like this little extra sweep here at the end, just to make sure there are no little iris fibers in the paracentesis. And then the incisions are sealed up nicely. And then on top of that, doing the MIGS procedure also helps. So this patient should have a much better IOP control. And then obviously the patient still needs to be washed for the rest of the patient's life because the glaucoma will still progress. That's the nature of the disease. A little air bubble helps there at the end too. Pressure's normal, incision sealed up. Nicely done case, thank you for sending it. You can send your video in too. Go to cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. There's a link there that gives you exact directions. Please follow them exactly. Thanks so much.